Hello everybody, it's Rare Doctor here with a tutorial on how to build some bridge designs that I've come up with for use with immersive railroading in Minecraft. So, the first type that I've come up with is a arch bridge. Now, the first type is built out of cobblestone, yet given my survival world when building rail lines, cobblestone is one of the most easiest things to come by. But, it could also be used with a bunch of different materials like stone bricks, or even immersive engineering scaffolding. So to build this first type of bridge, what I do is you got to build uh, build up a ways. I think like five to six blocks, well, some, something around there. And just build them as wide as the track uh, gauge that you're using. So for standard, it's three, and then for narrow, it's two, and Minecraft, it's one, etc., etc. Um, but they can be built wider as well. Uh, it's just I was kind of been building them just to three wide just to save time So just got to build a couple out this way to build the deck and then from underneath I go one block out from the end and put Two things like that then I put another row of cobblestone like that and take this all the way down then I put a uh, three by three thing of cobblestone there and then I'll kind of do a mirror image of the other side Oops, forgot to put some over there and I'll need to build this out a little bit more these two more and yeah so then you're virtually just building a mirror image of it initially and I'll come around Put a bunch, put those like that. Then I'll take the stairs and I'll put them under each end like that. And I'll take some slabs and put them on those ends like that. And that's mostly done. Now, to make it a bit more look like an arch, I'll go inside here and put another set of steps like that and just uh, replace those blocks. And I'll go over there, whoops, and put some more like that. Go to the other side and do it, except facing towards the middle of the arch. And I'll put a few down there. And voila, there you have it. All you need to do is lay the track on top now. So the second type of bridge I've come up with is a uh, thing they call them deck girder bridges. I could be wrong on that thing. Now, um, my survival world, nickel, I have a fair bit of nickel, but I don't have much use for it. So I'll usually turn it into uh, sheet metal and build the bridge out of it. So I think it looks relatively good. Then I have just steel fences on the side. So to build this bridge, um, it's not that uh, difficult except this time I usually have them how many is it five wide yeah five wide uh, so let's come over here build up the pier and then oh, let's get some sheet metal uh, There. So I usually go too, too high. And over like that. I'll just fill in the bottom like that. Bring them out. Fairways like that. Now the nice thing about this designer bridge, it can be virtually done to any length. The arch bridge, it only looks good when you have, when you're able to have, uh, the amount of space required to make one or more arches, which depending on the terrain that you're building in can be kind of difficult. Um, it's nice about this one, you can build as long or as short as you need and it still looks good. Just fill the ones in there. Alright, that's long enough for now.
then we'll put the slabs out uh, out the side. Let's get some steel fence. And voila, there you have it. All you need to do is just lay the track. And there you have it. Now, the reason why I make it this wide is so you can have a walkway. So especially like if this is in like part of a yard or a place where you're close to a switch where you need to get off the train and throw it. This is kind of nice to have a walkway to the side so you don't need to climb over your train. And yeah, other than that, I think it's a simple good looking bridge. Now you can really use any type of sheet metal you like. It's, as I mentioned before though, I have a lot of nickel in my survival world with not a lot of use for it. So I find that nickel looks good, especially since it's like got that greenish gray look to it. Now the last bridge, and probably the most grand of all, is the through truss bridge, which I made out of immersive engineering scaffolding, as well as having some nickel uh, sheet metal to uh, lay the track on. So this bridge takes a bit more time, but I think it looks pretty epic. And you can also make it much longer than this as well. Um, <clears throat> and there's, of course, you, if you're using smaller gauge, you could make the bridge smaller, etc. Or you can make it even larger if you'd like. <clears throat> so to build that bridge, what I do is it needs to be uh, 7 wide for standard gauge at least. That's what I would use. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, I'll just build it, won't build it very tall. Alright, that should be enough. Then we'll do two scaffolding like that, two scaffolding like that. Uh, sheet metal down the middle. And then we'll build out this way. Now, I do understand in survival it is a bit more difficult to build it, given that when I was building mine in my survival world, I fell off it multiple times in trying to build it. But I'll just doing as creative for speed. And then you just put stairs like this. So you put one right side up, the other one upside down to kind of get the angled look. And then. All right, that looks kind of tall enough. We'll see how tall it actually is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. And then we repeat the same thing on the other side. Is that lined up? Yes, it's lined up. And then just put another uh, thing of scaffolding up here. And then just bring another row of scaffolding bottom there. Put one there, put one there. Bring the sheet metal out. That far, and that's our entrance complete. We'll expand it out a little bit more this way. Because then um, we'll need the downward facing brace. But instead of starting it all the way at the top, like on the other side, we'll only we'll start at one down from the top and we'll work our way back down. And 
And then put another thing of scaffolding up and bring it across. And then do the same on this side. And then bring this up here and bring this over. Put that there, put that there. Bring this across. And yeah, so this is kind of the first half. So um, on this side, um, I'm not going to build a full one just because it's kind of boring to watch him do the full thing, but then for well, well, let's do this side, and I'll leave it at that. Um, so it's same process, except that you don't go as high as when I did the first time, because we're going to be bringing that uh, top girder across to attach with the upright. I'm not even sure if I'm using the right engineering term, so any civil engineers that are watching, uh, if you just let me know in the comments what the correct terms are. That'd actually be great, because I'm I kinda like building bridges. The only reason why I don't like building them survival is just because it takes so much time, but uh they can really look epic. And at a nice um and look like you actually really had to build and work hard to build the route. And yeah, so you just do it like that. Um now, as for height, I find that five or six is sufficient for most immersive engineering equipment. Here, let's just bring up some freight cars and I'll show you. Um, so, let's see, what's an almost has to be X26 boxcar, and we'll bring it on the rack. So, the X26 boxcar, if I can get it to fit there, is, yep, uh, how many blocks is this tall anyways? One, two, three, four. So, you know, six blocks is sufficient for most immersive engineering equipment, or, sorry, immersive routing equipment, I should say. But I've actually did a test, and the auto rack is uh, way, way... There we go. Unfortunately, the auto rack is um, a bit too large for this bridge. So if you are, if you do like to run modern trains with immersive routing, I would suggest building at least another block or two high. Because as you see, this is kind of um, getting caught up in this top top girder there. So especially if you play it with transferring blocks, you might want to build a bit larger. But uh, like any of these designs, they can be changed uh, to suit the gauge, uh, length of gap that you want to bridge, etc., etc. So yeah, um, I hope this inspires you on some designs. And if you have any other cool designs, um, please let me know in the comments and you know post pictures or videos or something of them. I'd be quite interested in that because it's. Because you, um, oh, one thing, other thing I should mention before I close is that the only problem with these designs is that it's kind of hard to do on a curved route, uh, just because the way Minecraft is. Um, so I'm kind of hoping somebody maybe comes up with an immersive routing bridge mod that uh, makes decent looking bridges uh, for curves, but, or an angle track. Um, but for now, I've found out I've been able to make do because because one thing I've done for these bridges sign is make them longer. So if the track is diagonal, I'll just make it I'll just make the bridge wider. Um, I know it doesn't look as good, but it looks better than trying to make an angled bridge for some reason. So yeah, um, I hope you've been inspired by this. If you uh, have any other designs that you think I should know about, please let me know. I'd be quite interested in viewing them. And yeah. So with that, have a good day, everybody. Bye.